Hey, what's up guys, Bjorn here, and in this video we're gonna look at the dead bugs that we're gonna be using over next week's program. So your dead bugs, you're gonna start on the floor, like so, in this position, arms up, legs up, like so. So what you're gonna do is make sure that you hold your lower back down and push it against the floor, making sure that it doesn't rise up and comes off, okay? So, drop your shoulders down to the floor, lower backs into the floor, Feet and arms up in the air like so, and all you're going to do is you're going to drop the opposite arm and opposite leg at the same time, okay? And your goal is to try and maintain that tightness and that flatness through the lower back on the floor. This is you engaging your deep core muscles to maintain pressure and to maintain posture through your midsection. So, this is your position that you're going to hold for about 15 seconds you can hear that I'm starting to struggle a little bit my abs are starting to pull or the lower back starting to get a little bit um, um, weak and then you're going to come back relax it up back up to the top and then take a deep breath in hold and then bring it out again alternate arm alternate leg this time it's my left arm and my right leg and you're going to hold there for 15 seconds hold until it starts shivering, shaking and shuddering, and then you bring it back up to the top, okay? So you repeat that four rounds, okay? So once you go in left and then you're right, that's considered as one rep. So one whole rep, is, one whole round is 15 seconds on each side. And that is your dead bugs that you're gonna do. Great for establishing core through your midsection. You wanna remember also that after you Felt that engagement through your midsection over here. This is what you're going to be using for your deadlift, your barbell work, or anything that requires you to turn on your core. That is the feeling, that sensation that you need to have. That deep core pull, trying to maintain that flat um, position through flat or neutral position through your spinal column. Hey, what's up guys, Bjorn here, and in this video we're gonna talk about your external rotation for your rotator cuffs. Um, some strengthening work for your rotator cuff. So what you'll need is a little band like so. Um, I'll have one of these available in both venues. Um, a couple of rubber bands like so. Don't use the black bands as well. If you are going to use it, try and use this, the one band of it only because the black band is actually quite heavy and a little bit too much load for what you'll be doing. So with your rotator cuff external rotation, um, strength work, what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say, work on your um, external rotation of your left arm. So what you want to be doing is to have the band a little bit lower. So it's going to take the super, the upper rotator cuff out. And this is what you're going to work on to try and externally rotate. And you're going to try to work to your end range of motion here. And you do not want to be engaging anything in your upper shoulder. So if you have muscles in your shoulders, keep them as relaxed as possible. It's also very common that you want to try and lock it down and try and flex all your deltoids. And that doesn't really work. And that really needs to be shut off and completely relaxed so that the muscles inside your shoulder will actually do the work itself. It should come from the deep capsule there. And you want to try and focus on keeping the delts off. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off and then extend rotate till you get to the end range of motion, which is right here. Don't try and extend out and press because you're, all you're gonna do is just start firing your bigger muscle groups that's gonna bring the, bar, uh, the band out a little bit further. So if this is it, this is it. This is all you've got, that's your end of range and let's not work to any more than you'll need to. And the minute you feel that your shoulder muscles actually start firing that's when they're not worth your that that's when the larger group is taken over so you want to stop right there relax those deltoids and let those rotator cuffs work a little bit harder and also bring it in slowly all the way down one good thing that you can also use is to make sure that you have um, a little sponge or a ball tucked in just under where your elbow is and that will prevent you from actually trying to wing out your elbow or to try and press out with your other uh, larger muscle groups, okay? So that is your external rotation um, work with a small band, okay? That's your six to eight reps there. Um, and then after that, you can bring up and engage your supraspinatus, which is another muscle group, a smaller rotator cuff group, which is a little bit higher up, that gets your arm up a little bit higher like so. And then that is going to be your external rotation with uh, 
abduction of your arm as well. Again, go to your end range of motion. Don't try and force it out back here, okay? If you're stuck there and you stop there, that is it. You may want to also work on, um, let's, let's look at that position over there. If you're stuck in that range of motion and you don't have any more to get back over there, chances are, that rotator cuff group may be a little bit tight and maybe you need some stretching instead uh, to help you with your strength work as well. So again, um, grab a stick that will allow you to get that external rotation stretch like so. Um, might, want to, might want to try this or not. Might bend your little pinky finger. So that's your external rotation stretch over there to increase that stretch of your rotator cuffs before you get any more of your strength work done. You want to get further back, get a little bit mobile in those muscle structures there before you get into the strength work. Okay, so keep the elbows up high, shoulder height only. Don't let it come up a little bit higher or pull back here. And then externally rotate up to top. The band should flow and it should go straight into um, the rig like so. Okay, so just have to watch the angle of the band. That's going to help you get the most out of your rotator cuff strength work as well. If the angle of the band is not going in the right direction, you're not going to get the best out of your rotator cuff strength work. Okay, so keep the elbows up high. Again, relax your upper, uh, upper shoulders and your delts so that the deep shoulder muscles can actually work. That was actually burning right deep in my shoulders and that's, that's when I know that it's actually working. Okay, so those are your two movements here for your external rotation, rotator cuff strength work with a small rubber band, use about six to eight reps. Um, rest as you need, don't go, don't try and crank it too much um, if your delts are starting to fire. Okay guys, thanks very much for listening and watching and we'll see you in the box soon.